Hey everybody, Jessica Henry Gray here. Today I am in Rocky River Parks in Cleveland Metro Park area. And today I'm gonna be painting that scene behind me with this beautiful bridge. It's kind of a turquoise color. I just, I love it every time I go past. So I'm gonna, I have my canvas set here in a vertical position. So I'm gonna sketch that scene that scene back there. Uh, but first, before I jump into it, I wanna tell you about something that we are really excited to present to you. We recognize that people are at home, they're stuck, they're with their kids. You're, you may be uh, pulling your hair out, not sure what to do with all this free time. And we, we are understanding of that. I, especially as an artist and a mom who homeschooled, I get it, I know what you're going through. I, we have put together a really unique and special offering for you guys. Um, it's free and we're really excited to share this with you. So stay tuned. I'm going to share more of those details as we move along here, but I think you're really going to like what you hear. All right. So what I want to also show with you today is I brought my kids with because, hey, we all have our kids home, right? So my kids are home from school and they are joining me today as I'm out here plein air painting. And I have my daughter who's actually a member of our Renaissance Academy and she's doing a little bit of one of the studies in the Academy. Part of the Academy lessons includes getting out and plein air painting, sketching from life. And so she's over off that way, watercolor painting this beautiful tree trunk and water area. So I'll show you a little bit more of that. And my son, is way at the top of this hill somewhere up there behind me and he's drawing the scene below us. So I'm gonna share those with you today too. Just want you guys to know too, we understand where you're at and I really wanna encourage you all to not be afraid to get out plein air paint because I will tell you there is nothing more peaceful than being out in nature and I have been saying this for almost 200 videos now. You guys get out, enjoy nature. Um, so anyway, I'm so happy to have you with, and let's jump into this. I'm gonna talk more about all that as we go along. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do now that I'm set up with my easel is I'm gonna do a sketch of my scene behind me. So I'm gonna do a quick thumbnail sketch. I'm gonna do it in this vertical format because I really like the way some scenes just really set themselves up as obviously horizontal or obviously vertical. So I love that behind me, and I'm gonna get going on that sketch. Sometimes I like to start with a rectangle and then work inside those boundaries. Other times I'll do the sketch and then figure out where my boundaries go around that. In this case, I'm, I may try both. I'll see what happens if I start with this. So I'm gonna determine that I'm gonna have a lower horizon line since most of what I'm gonna be doing is this bridge. This cliff comes down about like that and then the bridge will be way up here and the major curve will be in this area. So I'm looking now for the big patterns of light and dark and I've got this darker area under the bridge and the water as it comes along this way. And I like this really dark um, charcoal pencil because I'm able to isolate the areas where I have the strongest impact of value um, that I'll be working with. That's my no tan and those simple compositional um, patterns large masses. Okay, so I like that. I like that the viewer is going to be led in through this way and then up to the bridge and then right out like that. Okay, so let's jump in and get going. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my palette. This is an open box M design. It is their smallest one as an eight by 10. I have my paint uh, thinner right here, Otto's Mineral Spirits in this can. And then I have my little PVC brush holder just right off to the side. Most of these brushes are two, four, six, and eight in a flat, um, just fit right there. Over here, I have my little linseed oil in my little palette cup. And then I'm gonna put out my paints. So this is just a eight by 10 canvas. And let's see, let's start out. I'm gonna use titanium white today. Make sure to put out enough paint so that you don't have to keep going back to get more. 
that's one of the secrets to being an efficient plein air painter so that you don't have to keep going back and getting more. You can be faster if you just get put enough out. Cadmium yellow medium. You can always take your leftovers and put them away in a con plastic container in your freezer. Yellow ochre. And you can also get this already at home even before you head out. That would be even more efficient use of your time. Burnt sienna. Ultramarine blue. We use today phthalo green. You don't need much. It's a very powerful color. Maybe just the smallest amount of alizarin crimson. I may pull out some more violets than what I see out there, but that's about all that's for. Okay, so let's get going. Okay, so I'm just going to put a thin layer of um, and just this underpainting on my canvas before I get going. It is a relatively colorless day and scene. So sometimes I find that when I am planner painting, I don't always do a layer underneath, but sometimes I do. And in this case, I feel that some of this vibrancy will come through uh, my paints. And so that's why I'm opting for this. It's a little darker than what I'm gonna need. So I am choosing this. I'll wipe some of it off as right here, just a minute. So it's just thinned down with some thinner. Doesn't have to be perfect. Taking a paper towel and I'll wipe that down. Okay, that's fine. Now I'm gonna take, and leaving that puddle right on my palette, I'm gonna take a little bit smaller brush. This is a size two and a little bit of thinner and some ultramarine blue into that sienna. And I'll draw on my drawing that I had sketched in the beginning right onto the canvas. my darkest areas. this phthalo green and a little yellow and a little white at this moment just to put in these color notes right where I see them so I don't lose them. Sometimes when the sun is shining and it's just sporadic um, you really have to grab those notes when you can. So a little phthalo green, a little white and some cadmium yellow gives you that sunny look there. The sun really hitting that back in there. I 
notice those few spots that are really key to that. Now if the sun moves, at least I have those notes in place. Clean that pale green off, it's really strong. A little white, a little cad, teeny bit of cadmium yellow. Let's get some of these other color notes before they disappear. I'm just going to take a little bit more of this white and I want to start indicating some of the lighter spots on here that are not exactly sunlit but are lighter in value. So taking a little bit of the yellow ochre and some white, I'm observing that these patches of straw dead grass over here are pretty light. So we're going to indicate that brightness. That. And then I'll pull in a little bit more of the birch trees and things that are over here. Okay, so for now, oops, maybe a little bit of the highlights on the water before I jump too far ahead. Mostly white. And then that gives me a sense of where I'm gonna go with the design like that, okay? So now, like I normally do, I always start from the background and work my way to the foreground. So let's start at the top of this painting. Okay, so now I am going right over the top of where I have those trees way up there. Um, and I'll come back over that area with a little bit lighter color and show you how I do trees. The best way to do them is to squint down. I'll do it lightly. Squint down at the area and see what you see just as a simple mass. And we'll make a nice gray mixture. Squinting down. some of that sky show through. So now I'll come back through here with a little bit. That's fine just to suggest maybe I'll put in a few indications of some trunks little trunks or whatever like but remember that's not the background is not what it's all about so just keep it as vague and simple as possible I want this a little bit cleaner and brighter at the side here. And spots of white I do add a lot. Now I'll just start with a gray, a little blue, a little brown. I'll just go right into that white. And if I add a little more sienna, it kind of warms it up. Maybe a touch of yellow ochre will give me that feeling like maybe there's a little bit of gold peeking through. Nature's first green is gold, right? <laughs> so we'll just keep a soft suggestion of that forest back there. Nothing, we don't want sharp edges but I also don't want it all mushy either. So 
Give it a sense of its own integrity and space without calling for a lot of attention. So as we get closer to the bottoms of the trees where it comes down into the actual cliff, when I squid down, that's how you take a complicated scene like that and you turn it into something a lot lot simpler squint I even close one eye I close this is my recessive eye so I close it and I squint with my dominant eye so when I squint down at that mass of trees and whatever um, I just see this sort of vague gray area. And occasionally you get some defined cliffside passages. Look her up there, other side of that bridge. I'm noticing the light as it moves down the cliff, it gets darker toward the bottom. A little more linseed oil. When you go to grab linseed oil, just use the corner of your brush. You don't need very much. I'm allowing my brush to show the direction of the slope in this hill. Again, squinting down, it's giving me these colors that I'm seeing. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, a little more sienna in places. And I also have these ridge lines. I'm going to angle downward that way. They look a little bit more blue and brown to me. Some are darker than others. To the stark down here gives us the illusion of that other side of the bridge shadow over there. Go on that side.
Okay, so I'll come back in through here now and get some of the sky peeking through the trees. So you can see how I'm still using the color notes, but I am, I've painted over some of them, but then I'll come back to them. Because the note was there, I can easily um, come back to where it was. And then I'll come back over here with a little bit more trees and stuff like that. Okay, coming in on this side, get some of these trees. The gray, blue, brown. hit some of these passages where it's sort of a smoky gray, the bottom of this cliff, just with a little bit lighter value. I'm just saying that as, as this cliff levels out, it's getting more of the bounced sky down here. For a while it gets dark because it's more vertical, and then as it levels out, it picks up more of the sky down here. It's important to be sensitive to those passages where you have a shift in the landscape, landscape and the light will be affecting it differently.
today I really wanted to paint some water, so I'm anxious to get going on that. The water is so peaceful. And even though we have all this traffic and the noise and stuff, I still find it's really nice just being down here by the water. Okay, we're going to pause for a moment. I'm going to do a little bit more of this background work and then I will refilm again when I start on the water so you can just see how I work on some of that. Um, crack your ankle, we're all in trouble. Whoa! <laughs> all right, so you're doing this scene with the black bridge. Yes. You got that in. So you got the good color with the water that's in here. Thank you. Yeah. I decided that actually I'm going to make it like it, it broke because mm -hmm. it would be going up for a long time. I like your arrangement of the trees in here. Thank you. Kind of like your setup here too. Uh, my people back there. If, um, say you have like a color and you put it on too dark with the water, mm -hmm. the fun thing about watercolor is that you just dab it and most of the color comes off. So you can lift it off. Uh-huh. Great. Okay, so we have this gorgeous reflection down in the water right now that I really want to try to get some of those color notes in again before it fades away with the sun having just come out. I'm seeing these in here and I'm just going to lay them down where I see them um, so that I can get them in and then I'll work the water around there. the color of whatever is being reflected down in water is always going to be a little bit darker so I'm using some of the um, colors for my reflection my bridge that are a little bit darker than what I have up here I wanted these to be a little more brighter more intense Okay, now getting into this water, taking some ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, lots of it. A little more linseed oil to kind of stretch that a little bit. I'm taking, there's some burnt sienna that's getting mixed into this, but there's this beautiful olive green that I'm seeing down here in the water. And I put some of the shoreline in there. And so into that, I'm cutting into the, my, with my water line a little bit to get um, that to be a little bit finer line. Working up my way along the shoreline in here. Working one over here, very dark, right next to the rocks. Nearly all of green. And where else do I have that? Over here, it's more of a pasty whitish more yellow ochre olive green on the sunlit side let's get a little bit cadmium yellow into that looks like that bright white that i had has gone to carve into that i can add some of those highlights back a little bit just to give the illusion of more water but water will change the surface of water changes very much just by how the light will change how the wind ripples across the surface
Now I'm going to paint some of this olive that I had in and around my lighted, my reflections. because the wind has shifted and the sun has shifted, but that sun is helpful because it brings back this reflection in here. Got some shadows streaking across the water. I'm noticing this strong shadow back here on these, um, under this pylon, and I wanna really get these in when I see them because it's giving me a lot of interest and dimension into this painting. So that especially just added so much seeing that um, come out. Made all the sunlight look stronger. And so let's make sure that gets in place. And that was exactly as I had sketched it earlier in my preliminary findings of this. Now I've got some dead grasses and things down here that I would like to get in there. So I'll just mask that in. Kind of looks just like the water, but adjust that. Nothing fussy because I really don't want to draw the eye down there. And then you can even take the end of your brush and scratch in some more branches. everybody that wraps up this video i hope you enjoyed this and you enjoyed following along remember if you did enjoy it to like and subscribe you know i appreciate it and i always love your comments and be sure to check out the links below for the special offers that we are offering all right you guys take care and have a great week i will see you next time bye bye Hey everybody, Jessica Henry Gray here. Today I just wanted to come on here and talk a little bit about some of the things that are going on in the world today. Obviously we're all aware of the virus that's going around and um, I just wanted to reach out to you and just offer some ideas and help. Uh, I came to you outside here today in nature because I just feel that being out in nature is one of the most healing places you can be. But even if it's not practical or even possible to go outside right now, drawing and painting can be good for the soul. A friend of mine said yesterday, I don't know what I would do if it weren't for art. So we are offering free videos of drawing, watercolor, and oil painting. These are just a few modules from each of those different disciplines, and um, we are excited to share these with you. We specifically selected these five videos from the Renaissance Academy of Fine Art modules that are designed to help get you going in whatever discipline you want to work in. These classes are wonderful for anybody at any age. As you saw in my YouTube video this week, my kids were out doing some of these um, exact same lessons that we are offering to you. If you're interested, just click the links below and you'll be able to see what you want to do, the watercolor, drawing and it is basic beginner drawing as well as oil painting all right you guys we are all together in this so um just for, as a gift from us to you i hope that you take advantage of this and enjoy this time with your family you'll never regret these times that you spend together all right be safe